morning, y'all. Wow. Well, it's 8.59, just a minute or so before um, we really get started, but I like to push that button earlier, and now I'm live. So, yeah. Um, we'll wait just a little bit till it hits 9 o'clock, but if you're on already with me, y'all then jump in and... Um, yeah, and say where you're from, and um, April 17th is today while we're uh, doing this live, and though I know people will be watching this um, for, you know, not live over the next uh, few weeks, so um, yeah, I'm excited. Uh, so yeah, well, good morning, y'all. It's nine o'clock, and um our hour together and I'm really really excited so um, I want to start with prayer yeah Lord we are so thankful <clears throat> that we get to hang out with you and that you're ready and available thank you that we have access right into the throne room to come in to visit with you and to hear your voice um, so today, Lord, we are asking that you will make, um, the study like a refreshing, cool North wind to us that you would blow out lies that we have not believed, or excuse me, lies that we have believed and blow in the truth that we do believe that we, you want us to believe. So would you do that for us, Lord, as we spend time with you and with each other today? So, <clears throat> yeah, Jesus, we want to walk out on the water with you. We want to be like Peter. We want to have our eyes on you, and we want to get out of the boat and walk forward. So we bless your name, Jesus. We ask that you would help us in our thoughts. You would help us um, in our mindsets and everything that we are to be doing, Lord, that you would just come and visit with us right now, like you're sitting in the room with us right now. That would be so cool. So thank you, Jesus. Yeah, in your name we pray. Amen. So cool, Alicia. It looks like you've got your little breakfast sandwich, your Texas coffee cup, your journal. Hi, Judy from New Braunfels. Um, and let's see who else. Uh, Michelle's on, so um, yeah, I know, yeah, so when you jump on, just, um, yeah, just say what you're doing, <laughs> where you are. Um, well, when I did the questions <coughs> for this chapter, um, actually, I got more questions than I thought. Um, so Alicia says they like south winds better than north winds. Yeah, so I guess we're in Texas. We like those those northern northers coming through. Um, so good morning, Gina from Florida. Um, so y'all, when I was writing the journal notes for this chapter, I ended up with more than I thought that I would. And so I want to just jump right in there. The subtitle to this chapter is called God is Up to Something in the Detours. And I just want to just say, I'm just going to start with yeah, more prayer to God. Lord, You, we are in a detour right now. This is not something that we had expected. <laughs> we had not expected to be in a detour like this um, in March and April of 2020. Um, but we are with you. you. We know you're with us in this detour. So... Um, yeah, help us learn and glean everything that we're supposed to glean and learn from this, uh, from this detour right now. Yeah, Jesus, we definitely want you. Um, as we are in quarantine, we are shut down. We're not doing the normal activities of going out and about except for just for, um, exactly what we need to go to for food and for pharmacy, um, maybe some medical appointments, but Lord, otherwise we are, we are following the guidelines of our government. And, uh, we ask in the name of Jesus that this virus die off. We ask that it would stop in your name, Lord. Um, 
we know you're powerful. You are the great healer and you can do this. Lord, we thank you for the good that's coming forth. And we say even more, even more good, even more that our eyes are fixed on you. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. So y'all, this chapter, I don't know if it's one of my, I think it's definitely one of my favorites in the book. Um, just so many miracles in this. And Heidi says she's ready to get out of the boat. Y'all, it, it takes courage to get out of the boat. Um, it takes, um, we can't just do the same old, same old and expect something to be different. And so I really think that God is using this holy parentheses of time. And I feel like you're going to hear me say some of the same things. I love that, that term. My daughter-in-law asked me this week, what does it mean by holy parentheses? And I said, really, it's this holy detour, y'all, that God has put us in right now. And um, hey, Lisa from California, glad to see you on uh, live with us. Um, hi, Kathy. Um, so if we want to be different on the other side of this, y'all, then we, we have to make some changes. Like we have to ask God to help us be brave and strong and courageous, be very courageous. He was telling this to Joshua, the end of Deuteronomy, the beginning of Joshua. I've read that so many times. Be strong and courageous. Be very courageous for I, the Lord, have gone before you. So we have to believe that he has gone before us, that this detour right now does not surprise him. And what are we doing with this border? I remember a week ago, um, last Friday, I talked about this um, with the weaving of our tapestry. And I see this banner being about this long. It's four to six inches. I don't know. And it's just this border. It's this banner in our tapestry of our life that God's giving us right now. And if we're picking up his golden thread, meaning him and spending time with him, in new ways and fresh ways as we create as we hang out then y'all that's so cool um that it will make a difference for the rest so this whole you know this is talking this this title of this chapter came out of peter's obedience to come out on the water um when they saw jesus walking and he was the only one that got out of the boat um and so isn't that cool? Like he did get out of the boat. Like that's just so cool. Uh, good morning, Michelle. Glad you're on here. Um, yeah. So I start out in this chapter with this inner dialogue of a mind battle, I will call it. And, um, you know, myself asking, why do I put myself through this? Uh, why have you... Um, you know, why are you still going up to bat? Because you're just getting knocked down every single time. Sorry, my <clears throat> son's dog is seeing somebody outside and is eh, barking, wanting to go out. But um, so that's gozo, meaning joy in Spanish. <laughs> um, so sometimes when we get to this pain point, we have to ask ourselves, is this worth it? Like, what is happening here? Why am I putting myself, and I'm saying in the mental pain, I'm not saying physical pain, but where we, um, where we are the one, like, it seems like we're the one that is the only one getting out of the boat and then we sink and like, okay, that's very scary. And, um, you know, we, so for me, it was this, this, uh, local art, um, uh, gallery, our community art show, we would, every few weeks, I would go and um, <clears throat> be a part of it. I will try to be a part of it. I could take four paintings and then by the, in the morning, and then in the afternoon by one o'clock, you would go and pick up anything that didn't get in the show. And <clears throat> occasionally I would get in, but most of the time I would not get in. And um, I would feel so defeated after that and it was this mind battle and i i uh talk about some of the things that would go in my head on page 55 in my book and y'all if you haven't gotten my book i hope you will um because <clears throat> i think 
that it's, um, yeah, I mean, God helped me write it and I can look at it today, this year, this time in 2020 and see that it's sort of timeless. At least it's not old, even though it came out last June <laughs> in 2019. Like it's so timely for us right now. Uh, yeah. Thank you, Barbara, for loving me. Thank you, Sharon. Uh, yeah. So here were some of the thoughts that would going through, were going through my head, and they were negative, and they weren't the truth. But I would get into this space in my head, and especially after getting the rejection and going walking down the hall of shame, I called it, to go pick up my four paintings that weren't didn't get in the show. And, um, and you know, I, I know that my my type of art is not the type of art that is being produced from uh, fine art teachers because I haven't really taken those classes. God is the one that has taught me how to paint and with lots and lots of practice to improve my skill set. And I'm, I'm unique and that's cool. So I want to release that to you, that you are a unique artist. You're not meant to be like everybody else. However, it doesn't mean, and I, I, it doesn't mean that I should be arrogant or prideful that I can't learn more. And for me personally, y'all, it is about color theory for me to understand in my mind as I'm painting, like what are warm and cool colors and what would be the, the colors that would go together. Honestly, I don't even know how to think that way because I paint from my emotions and what I'm hearing from God. Uh, so I think in my book, definitely, I don't think it's in this chapter, but in another chapter that I'm a bit prideful about not knowing color theory and uh, that I let somebody else mix my colors, etc. But I know God is is telling me it's okay. You, I made colors like this is who I am. Like so amazing that you can m mix. Uh, I do know this blue and red together and get purple and violets. Like that is so cool. Like God's amazing mystery of how he made colors when we mix shows more of him. And that's what he's shown me recently. And I, um, yeah, I'm still have a long ways to go on that. Uh, but I just admit that, that, um, <clears throat> color is really from God. He's the one that made the colors and, um, yeah. Uh, thank you, Lisa, for saying that. Water or cool color. So blue must be cool. And red, fire. Good. Okay. <laughs> Hi, Lily. Okay, Lily uh, just came on, y'all. And she's in Bogota, Colombia. She's been um, messaging me this week. And so it's in the evening, eight o'clock in the evening in her time. And she wrote me early this morning and asked, what time was I coming on? So welcome, Lily. So glad to have you on the live uh, version. You have been uh, watching the recording ones, but I want to go back and tell you, read some of these things that I said about myself. And these are the opposite of affirmations. There is no way I'm an artist. I don't know what I'm doing. I have no formal training, so I'm not really an artist. The professional juror at the art show can see right through my amateur status. They just keep passing over me. Why not even try to get into an art show? It is a waste of money. Because, you know, y'all, I would pay money every uh, few weeks, like you paid, I think it moved up to $35, which isn't much, but, um, you know, it was like, okay, well, it's worth it if my paintings get in the show, but if it takes out, then I've just wasted that. But, um, yeah, so these are some of my negative thoughts. Uh, this is just too much for me. I'm so afraid it is crippling. I am painting and not hanging out with my friends. So then this self-sabotage, this victim mentality that I would get like, man, I'm doing all this and for nothing, you know, um, this is so lonely. Um, I don't know how to paint that. I wish people would stop telling me what to paint. Do they know I really don't know what I'm doing? I think that. <laughs> oh yeah, that was definitely like, I don't really know what I'm doing. Um, so I just say, Lord, let's get rid of these lies that we have believed. Um, a quote in the book says, uh, all the doubts and lies, they are like fiery arrows 
trying to find their way under my skin. So Lord, right now, we just ask for you to show us one or two fiery darts that are from the enemy of statements that we believe about ourselves that are not from you. So would you help us stomp on those, pull them out, shield them away with our shield of faith and stomp on them in the name of Jesus to say, I am an artist for you. Lord, thank you that you made me to create. Lord, thank you that I am unique. That there's nobody like me. There's nobody that will ever paint like me, even if they try. And um, you made me this way. I am carrying part of you, a unique DNA that only you meant for me to carry. So Lord, let it come forth with excellence. Let me practice my skill set so it is beautiful and carries you when it comes out onto the paper, onto the canvas, onto the wood, into the onto the paper, like I'm saying with even writing, with poetry, with your story. Yeah, Lord, thank you that you made us unique. So excited. So excited, Lord, to discover how you made me and how it's going to come out in a process, not automatically, but in a process. So, Lord, I want to hang out with you to um, to get this going in a greater way, in a beautiful skill set. Yeah, Jesus, thank you so much. Oh, dear, I don't want to leave this page. Um, yeah, I'm. so many comments are coming through on another part of my, <laughs> my email. So, um, yeah, so the struggle is will, real. Who is winning? This is the battle of your mind. So, Lord, we declare right now that you are winning, that you, we will hear your voice louder than we hear the voice of the enemy and our own self-doubts. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. So, Alicia says that Matt Tommy, one of our mentors that we, um, with uh, Thriving Christian Artists, says recognize, replace, and reinforce. So, it's a definitely a process. You have to, to hear that negative take it out and then keep believing of the truth of who you are. I'm looking over at my notes. I've got them on my iPad here. Um, yeah. So Jesus said to Peter, okay, so here's the deal y'all in this scripture, in this scripture that um, is from Matthew 14 um, <clears throat> about him walking on the water. He had just fed the 5,000. And I just want to read this to you because, man, it's so cool how Jesus had such purpose in everything he did. Everything he did. He had just miraculously fed 5,000. Um, it says about 5,000 men were fed that day, in addition to all the women and children. So, you know, it could have been 10 to 15. And I love teaching on that aspect there, um, that story, but that's not what I'm teaching on today. So immediately after this, Jesus insisted that his disciples get back into the boat and cross to the other side of the lake while he sent the people home. After sending them home, he went up into the hills by himself to pray. Night fell while he was there alone. What a beautiful example, y'all, to go away by himself to pray. So Lord, I pray that you will show us times right now in this season that we will go away with you. I know there's many times it says go to your prayer closet. Maybe it's just go to your window to look out. Lord, we thank you so much for your example that you went up into the hills by yourself to pray. And you were, and it was nighttime when you were there. Meanwhile, the disciples were in trouble far away from land for a strong wind had risen. So they're in the boat. They're far away from land. A strong wind had come up and they were fighting heavy waves. Waves At about three o'clock in the morning, Jesus came toward them walking on the water. When the disciples saw him walking on the water, they were terrified. In their fear, they cried out, it's a ghost. <laughs> Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah, they were afraid. Here he comes. Like, don't you just love it that he 
comes in an unexpected way. Jesus come in unexpected ways into our life. Y'all, he's walking on the water. <laughs> I don't know that they had ever seen him do that before. Um, but I really love it that he was, um, yeah, walking on the water. Um, oh, dear. Let me just let my dog out. I think this is going to be helpful. Let's stop working. Go. So sorry, this is what happens, but it's okay. <laughs> um, yeah, y'all. So they didn't expect him to come out like that. So Lord, we pray you will surprise us in how you show up. I mean, yeah, Lord, we want to experience you in new ways. We believe you are with us. Your very presence is with us right now. Um, so come and surprise us today. We know you're with us right now, but even in ways that we wouldn't expect. And here, there was a storm. Lord, for sure, you show up in the storms, for you are the Prince of Peace. Um, yeah. So they said it's a ghost. In their fear, they cried out, it's a ghost. But Jesus spoke to them at once. Don't be afraid, he said. Take courage. I am here. So we just want those words to wash over us right now. Don't be afraid. Put your name in there. Don't be afraid, Sarah. Take courage. I am here, the Prince of Peace. And then Peter called out to him, Lord, if it's re really you, tell me to come to you walking on the water. Yes, come, Jesus said. So Peter went over the side of the boat and walked on the water toward Jesus. Y'all. <laughs> Is that cool? He got out of the boat. He saw his leader, Jesus, and he said, I want to come. I want to join in. Can I come? And Jesus said, yes, come. He is telling us to come. Come to him, to the place that would seem impossible. He's saying, come, get out of the boat, come. So Peter did that. He got, went over the side of the boat and he walked on the water. Y'all, he did it. Sometimes I think when I thought about this verse and not really having it right in front of me, I'm like, oh, Peter sank. You know, that's what we remember, right? Peter sank. He didn't have enough faith. He sank. Y'all, he walked on the water. <laughs> he walked on the water. He got out of the boat and he walked on the water. He did it, but he got distracted. So Peter went over the side of the boat, walked out on the water toward Jesus. But when he saw the strong wind, and I'm just looking what strong meant here. Um, my eyes, uh, let's see. Well, I don't see it. It had a little asterisk I was going to see, but... When he saw the strong wind and the waves, he was terrified and he began to sink. Save me, Lord, he shouted. And Jesus immediately reached out and grabbed him. You have so little faith, Jesus said. Why did you doubt me? When they climbed back into the boat, the wind stopped. And then the disciples worshiped him. You really are the son of God, they exclaimed. So several points here, y'all. <clears throat> Jesus said to Peter, come. And Peter did. He walked on the water, but he got distracted by the reality of his circumstances. There was a storm. There were big winds. There were strong waves. And he let his emotions, his terror, he says he was terrified. And then he began to sink. So... Lord, we ask for you to reveal yourself to us. What you want us to glean from this scripture, from Peter's beautiful example that he was pulling out. He got out of the boat. He was doing the new thing. And help us to not see 
um, to focus on the hard things that we are to keep our eyes on you. Y'all, I remember when I was writing this book and, and many times in my past few years of journey of becoming an artist, I really said, Jesus, I've got to fix my eyes on you. My eyes are on you. And at many times I would picture myself getting out of the boat and actually like just looking at Jesus, like having my eyes fixed on him and ignoring the swirling storm around me that I felt would take me down. And then I, it would give me more courage because here's the deal, y'all. When I did sink, who was there right there with me? Jesus, he was right there with me. He was right there with me to pull me out of the waves. He is right there with us. He has not left us. He says he will never leave us or forsake us. He is right there with us, y'all. So I just say this is, where is our focus? I feel like this is something God wants us to get. Where is our focus? If it is on the storms around us, and believe me, we're going to find the storms. If you read Psalm 23 and believe it, he says, I've set my table for you. And the enemies are surrounding us. They're there is going to be a storm always, um, but God says, come to me. And the cool thing, when they got back in the boat, when they climbed back into the boat, the wind stopped. And then the disciples like just bowed before him and knew he was God. He, they knew he was, they worshiped him. It says, um, as the son of God, you really are with this huge miracle. So isn't that cool? So let me look over here at my questions. Um, yeah, all the doubts and the lies, they are like fiery arrows trying to find their way under my skin. The battle of your mind, the struggle is will, real. Who is winning? Um, <clears throat> yeah, let me see back over here. Um, So I really love this scripture, this story about Peter and Jesus. Y'all, there's so much. So Lord, I pray you will help us grasp what you really want us to get from this, that we would be brave enough to get out of the boat, whatever that looks like. And for me, y'all, physically, like <clears throat> in the last few days, definitely well, in the last few weeks, definitely doing this online Bible study was a get out of the boat moment. When I heard Jesus say, come and do this with me, I was like, oh my word. Ah, uh, yes. Okay. I will. So I just pray for internet connections to get increased Barbara right now. There's so many people on and it is struggling the, um, internet, like in the whole world wide web. So Lord, I just pray for Holy spirit to just renew connections for people so that they can get out. Yeah. And Michelle said the same thing. Um, right here on my Wi-Fi, it looks really strong. It's just the way it's going out everywhere. So I'm so sorry. Um, yeah, I'm hoping that the replay uh, would be stronger. So Lord, we just ask for supernatural connection right now uh, through all of this. Um, so yeah, Lord, help us to know when it when we are to step out of the boat. Um, Another thing, like even yesterday, I felt like God tell me, well, I knew the last few weeks I was to do an online art show, an art gallery in sale. And I was going to wait until next week. And then I just felt like God tell me yesterday morning, like do it tomorrow. Like what? We're, <laughs> what are people going to be doing tomorrow? You can just, uh, you can just do this. Um, yes, Lisa, this will be recorded. So you can go back on this and hear the rest. So blessings in your counseling call. May Holy Spirit help you and help your client uh, in beautiful ways. So we are overcomers. And um, so I just decided, you know what? I'm going to step out of the boat. I'm going to go ahead and do this this, you know, today. So this afternoon at two central time, y'all, I'm going to be doing an art gallery show sale. And I've already put some of my paintings up and it's going to be in Acts 1, 8 blessings in that part of Facebook live. And I'll just be walking around with my phone to my paintings and telling you about them. And, um, I'm really excited because, um, really excited about just showing you my art and telling you like the stories behind them of, 
what I was hearing from God when that happened. So yeah, if, um, if that's, yeah. And I totally leave it up to God. I mean, I've definitely asked for some to sell, but, uh, I'm leaving it up to God. Like it's just a beautiful sharing time with me that I get to do that. And um, so that was like something to get out of the boat. There was another something, well, definitely to write this journal that goes along with the book. Um, but there was another something new that God, I felt like God asking me to do. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, I'm just excited. For, when we step out of the boat, y'all, we see things in new ways, like G we're being obedient to Jesus. So yeah, let me read my next um, verses here. <clears throat> so yeah, I just said, choosing to believe who God says you are is scary. Why do we feel so exposed? Um, yeah. When he told me exactly what to do, it took me years for me to believe him. As I go through this chapter, y'all, I talk about um, me believing finally that I was an artist. It took me a while. There are many places and many times I, I'm like, I didn't believe that I was an artist. And uh, even though God had told me that, probably the second time I'd ever painted back in October of 2014, when I was going and meeting with the Cultivate Ladies, um, a beautiful group of women where we were just, we called it Cultivate. We were just going and hanging out and painting and listening to God. And God told me in my thoughts, you're an artist for me. And I was like, no way, there's no way. I don't know what I'm doing. And he said, hang out with me and I will teach you. So I believed him that I was, but in the process over the first few years, and this was five and a half years ago, I, there were times when I didn't believe I'm an artist, but now y'all, it's so strong in me. There's no way that I would take that away. Like I absolutely know that I am. Um, yeah. So <clears throat> there was a time in my life, um, and I'm on page 56 now that, it was one of the roughest times of my life where I was really struggling in my career and my job at school. I was a principal of a middle school and it was just, it was very, it was not a good fit. It was, there was so much conflict. I could not get into the holy flow of being the leader of the school in the way that I wanted to and needed to. And it was just, it was quite toxic and um, it just was not good. And um, some circumstances, which I really don't want, I, I'm protecting from the past, but uh, and don't want to go into it, but some circumstances were that I needed to find another job. And um, that very evening, I went uh, to go volunteer at a, at a, a rehab center uh, for young girls. And I did that every Tuesday evening. And I was a spiritual mentor there. And um, the director, the spiritual director, we, the girl I was to see that evening was not available. She was with her counselor and, um, the girl, so the, the spiritual director said, how are you doing? I said, not well at all. And she's like, well, let me pray for you. So she prayed for me and she prayed specifically for me to have a vision and that I would have have the interpretation of the vision. Well, this was new for me. I'd never had anyone pray that I would have a vision and she had never prayed that either. So we knew because I asked her later, did have you ever prayed that for someone before? And she's like, no. So I knew that God, Jesus sitting at the right hand of the father was interceding for me and telling her what to pray. Like he actually told her what to pray. Well, that night I barely slept. Actually, I never did really go to sleep. But in my twilight zone, early, early in the morning, I saw this vision, which I describe in the book. And then the next day, God helped me interpret it. And that was from Psalm 91 was the interpretation of it. And so I'm going to read you Psalm 91, this portion. Um, Psalm 91 was my mom's favorite Psalm. We read it at her service, but I would read it to her many, many times when she would get anxious. She lived with my husband and I the last seven years of her life. And, uh, we just, um, 
we just, yeah, it's just like a fa- it's a favorite. It is a favorite. And especially during this season of feeling like we are in a battle and on this detour, like I must have read it. I don't know how many times, not every day, but, um, but for many, much of my life in the last few years, I've read it every day. For he will order his angels to protect you wherever you go. They will hold you up with their hands so you won't even hurt your foot on a stone. You will trample upon lions and cobras. Y'all, he's giving us the power to do this. You will crush fierce lions and serpents under your feet. By the power of Jesus and Holy Spirit in us, we have the power to destroy. Hey, Sherry, glad you're on. Well, today's Friday, so that's cool. (laughs) And my Siri just turned on because they heard me say Sherry and they thought it was Siri that was on my phone. The Lord says, I will rescue those who love me. I will protect those who trust in my name. Lord, we love you and we trust in your name. And when they call on me, I will answer. So Lord, thank you for answering us. Thank you for answering us. Thank you for hearing our call. This is Jesus talking back to us, y'all. I will be with them in trouble. I will rescue and honor them. I will reward them with a long life and give them my salvation. Thank you, Lord. I said, I couldn't have made this up. It was too perfect. We have a living God. We have a God who speaks to us. We have a God that we can trust, that we can risk for, that we can walk toward, even if it seems impossible, improbable, or intimidating. Through this experience, I began to put a foot out onto the water. We were bold in our prayer, and he was bold in his response. Isn't that cool, y'all? When we step out, honestly, God responds so beautifully. He's waiting for us to step out of the boat. He's waiting. He is waiting. He is waiting. He is waiting. So I pray right now for you to to say, God, I want to step out of the boat in this place, in this way, as a creative. It may also be with family relationships. I don't really know where it is going to be. Um, Let me just pull up this iPad. Um, So yeah, Um, one of my questions from the vision of Psalm 91 that God had given me, this was in the spring of 2012 is when that was. Yeah, that was April of 2012 when that vision happened. Um, it says, has God shown you a vision before to help you walk out on the water? Pray and ask God to increase your awareness of his presence in tangible ways. So I wanted to talk about this amazing miracle that happened to us in Ulaanbaatar, Mongolia. Um, Thank y'all. It's all God. I just say, you know, God is the one that's given me this assignment to teach and to share with y'all. And um, yeah, this is him. This is him flowing through me. Um, But y'all, this amazing miracle that happened, a testimony to help my unbelief. Um, and I love this story, of course, because it involves my husband, but here is the picture. Uh, let's see, turn it this way. (laughs) It's backwards. There we go right there. And my hands over it there. Let me move it down. But this is the picture of us in Mongolia right after this miracle happened. Uh, we were smiling, (laughs) um, But just the short story of it, we were walking to the market and we had been in in Mongolia where our son and daughter-in-law lived for several, um, yeah, for several months. And we were about five days away from leaving to go to China, actually. And uh, we had been taught by my son to be sure that we had everything, cell phones and billfolds and everything hidden down in our our pockets uh, <laughs> because the, there's a lot of unemployment there. And these people are kind and loving people, uh, but they are also hungry and they have learned the habit of pickpocketing. So I don't want to slam them in that way, but they were, they were thieves. You know, this is just typical, very typical on the bus everywhere. You have to be so careful. They're very, very, very sharp at pickpocketing. They're not going to hurt you. They are just going to steal from you. And so 
we had been trained by my son. Well, my husband had on this jacket, which you can see um, there. It was like, it's winter. You know, I mean, it was already snowing in October when we were there. It gets 40 below in, in Ulaanbaatar in Mongolia. So anyway, we were walking to the market and I was walking in front with Deggy. Here she is. Um, and uh, my husband was walking behind with Evangeline. Well, with Rachel, I changed their names here because uh, yeah, I have to uh, to keep them protected where they are now. So he was walking behind with her and there was crowds and bump, bump, bump. And, you know, Wayman got bumped and they unzipped his front pocket and took out his billfold. And, uh, and, and uh, Rachel said, check your pocket and boom, it was gone. And my son was also right there. And I named him Samuel in the book. That's not his real name, but for protection. And um, he starts walking quickly. And um, Deggy and I had stopped to just wait for them because we were ahead of them. And I saw him walking so fast. And he was so angry. And he was trying to catch them, you know. But then it was huge crowds and just like, where did they go? And so he's like, Dad got pickpocketed. And um, uh, you know, then we all are gathered in a circle and, uh, my daughter-in-law just says a prayer and it said, uh, Jesus, I asked for the billfold to be returned immediately. She actually had said that right after they discovered it was gone and we're standing in the circle like, and I'm like saying what all was in your billfold. And of course, all the credit cards, a little bit of cash, some, some, actually some Russian money because we'd just been to, to Russia for a couple of weeks as well, or actually 10 days. Uh, so yeah, and we're standing there and then all of a sudden y'all, the thief brings back the billfold and hands it to my husband intact. And he says, um, take care of this. He said this in Mongolian language and then he quickly walked away from us and everything was in there nothing had been taken and we were in awe of our Jesus who somehow got the thief's attention. We don't know what, and we are believing we will see this young man uh, in the kingdom. We are believing that that encounter, whatever happened, whether it was an angel or Jesus himself came to tell this thief to return the billfold to my husband to and it happened y'all um yeah i'm so sorry the replay is so bad i'm so or the the play is so bad um alicia you ask how i photograph my work i just use my iphone i use my iphone and i lay it flat <laughs> and i try not to get it in anything so like in any shadows just um uh, really like in not bright sunlight and i just lay it outside flat and then um yeah, so I don't know. So sorry that the reception is so bad, y'all. Um, so that story is really so, so powerful um, of a miracle of God doing something of the unexpected uh, by us asking him to. My daughter-in-law asked him to return the billfold. And within five minutes, the billfold was back in my husband's hand. And to all the young people and all the people that we knew in Mongolia that were believers had never, ever, ever seen a thief return something that they had stolen. And so to believe the impossible, y'all, is so important. Um, yeah, it's so important. So um, there's a part of my book um, in this chapter about moving from cultivating to selling. And there's a quote that I have. Um, this time of intimacy with God was driving my creativity and moving me into a beautiful relationship. Is your intimacy relationship growing with your creator? And I want to read um, from Psalm 91 um, again, because I really believe as I have uh, been spending time with God in my time and place of creating, um, I am so amazed at 
where I actually am when I'm in this place of creating. And it is in the very presence of God. And I see it described in Psalm 91 at the beginning. It says, when you sit enthroned under the shadow of Shaddai, I am reading from the Passion Translation, you are hidden in the strength of God Most High. He's the hope that holds me and the stronghold to shelter me, the only God for me and my great confidence. Y'all, I believe that when we move into this place of creating, that we actually are in the presence of God and we are enthroned, we sit enthroned underneath the shadow of Shaddai. And I'm just going to look. Shaddai is taken from the Hebrew root word with many expressive meanings. It means God of the mountain, God, the destroyer of enemies, God, the self-sufficient one, God, the nurturer of babes, babies, and God, the almighty. So this is who we get to be underneath in the safe place when we create. And this is what I'm just asking God to release to you, that you find this amazing place of intimacy with God when you create, um, that you have walked out on the water and you go into that place and he is there. He's holding your hand. He is right there with you, y'all. He's not moving away from you when you take the step. Notice Peter had to take the step to get out of the boat. We have to make a movement. We cannot stay still in our thoughts or in our actions. We must make a movement. And I just release to you that you would make a movement towards God in something that you need breakthrough with whether it's your creativity, whether it's doing something that he's asking you to do, he will meet you right there. He will meet you right there. Like he met us on the street in Ulaanbaatar, Mongolia, and he turned the thief back around and brought the billfold back to my husband. So yeah, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Yeah, I just know the internet is acting up for all of y'all. I see that from Heidi in New Braunfels. So yes, Lord, I'm just going to keep pushing through and teaching. I have about 14 more minutes. And so I'm just going to keep teaching, pushing through. And as soon as this hour is over, then I'll share it. And hopefully you can hear the replay that will be stronger for you uh, since the live is not coming through. Um so isn't that cool, y'all? This place, the very first few verses of Psalm 91, go back and read that and say, God, I want to sit with you. I want to sit with you under the shadow of your wings. And I'm hidden there in your strength, in the strength of God most high. See, y'all, it's not coming from us. It is coming from him. Like he flows it to us. He gives us our creativity and he's never going to run out. So the more you practice, the more you release it, the more he's going to come and give it to you. He's the hope that holds me and the stronghold to shelter me. God is our hope, y'all, and he is holding us and he's not letting us go. And I just want you to feel his protection in this place of safety. Yeah, I want you to feel this. Um, so, yeah, uh, cool. there was another part on uh, page 59 about perfectionism and something that will steal uh, the joy. So this is a quote from page 59 from my book. Perfectionism steals the joy in the journey of creating. Do you agree with that? Is it true for you? Are you satisfied with the process towards excellence being in balance on your journey? So of course we want to make beautiful art. And